game. So we'll see what they dial up for him for this one. They'll start by running the option to the right. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Jackson running again. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by these Vikings defense. One yard is the loss. They back up even further to a third and 15. A tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That's for Bateman, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Lewis Seen. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a big defensive play there on the opening drive, no less, as they make the interception and bring it back for the score. And I think that's a signal for how this defense wants to play. They want to be disruptive, and you know they're going to take some chances. Well, sometimes it can burn you, but right there, it paid off. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Right back to Dobbins on first. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 18 carries, 74 yards. Nice, solid showing from him last week. Didn't blow the roof off with his numbers, but he certainly had a quality day and produced when called upon. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. This defense for the Vikings, they were excellent in that win over the 49ers last week. And I think our statistician, we ended up having to bring the blue tent and put it around him for a while because he was developing a hand injury from having to write down all the turnovers this team forced. Five, six, seven, eight. Absolutely unbelievable. I hope he'll recover. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. Here's the option going right. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. And now Jackson will look to throw it. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Another run here with Dobbins. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Andrew Booth picks it off. There he goes, right side. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Make it back-to-back -back weeks now with a pick six for him. He had one a week ago. Talk about being in the groove, and what are the odds of what we're seeing right here? You don't see it happen very often. Listen, if you get a pick six in a season, 
It's been a big year, let alone back-to-back -back weeks. I'll tell you this, I wouldn't play cards against this guy in the <laughs> locker room. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. He is off to an unfathomable start, throwing the football, throwing the two passes, both been intercepted and returned for touchdowns. We'll see how he bounces back. It's first and 10. And some space here. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 58 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. And they run the option here on first and 10. Six yards there on the keeper at second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, Jackson. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. And he's been playing at an elite level here in this early half of the season. Tops in the league in touchdown passes at this point. This is definitely a wide-open offense, and so we'll see if he can keep his string of good games going right here. They start the drive with Cook. And across midfield, he goes into Raven territory. The numbers a week ago for Cook. There isn't a coach alive who wouldn't like those numbers. Well over 100 yards and a touchdown, too. Partner, I think all the coaches who are in that great coaching box in the sky would take those numbers. <laughs> so dead or alive. Either way, they would take they that would kind take. of production. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. First down. Here's the run with Cook. It was Chuck Clark coming up to make the tackle. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue? Just make sure you feed me the football. And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to them. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you could have at that position, and sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. Cousins. He'll get that to Amir Smith-Marset. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 32-yard line. A nice pickup of 17 yards. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. <laughs> to throw again on second down, Cousins. That's taken in by smith Marset, And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. 
They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage. And, and it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A great effort there. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Vikings take a three-touchdown lead. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Extra point try, good by Godot, and that makes the score 21 to zip. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. The Ravens offense now. They get set to head back on the field. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now, they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Again, it's Edwards. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Meanwhile, and now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And this belongs to the Vikings. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You mates all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it, and not realizing the danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. This offense, thankful, I'm sure, to have the football back, but also, Charles, after a long drive of their own, they've got to be a little weary. Yeah, I would agree with that, and what you have to do to combat it, try and get fresh legs in where you can, especially to skill positions, and then for the offensive line, instead of attacking, maybe slow the tempo down a little bit, let them catch their breath. And that'll be incomplete. Tight end Irv Smith, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. Steps away. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, normally you see three tight ends in a formation. You have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line. Of